Simon's Quest on the good old NES has some problems, but it's conceptually interesting with style for days. Narratively, the Konami team went for something a lot darker than the silly cinematic offerings of its predecessor, and sonically, it's a masterpiece of 8-bit chiptune compositions. Many ROM hacks exist, but I haven't played most. I've always been fine with the confusing clues offered up by townsfolk, and have never had any complaints with the cryptic, admittedly flawed, puzzle progression. In early 2023, War Machine dropped Castlevania Chronicles 2, a completely reworked fan game playable for free on PC, and, uh, well, it kinda got my attention. Free is the operative word. If you paid for this, you were duped. There were some shady folks selling this online, so if you see it anywhere with a price tag, report it. War Machine isn't out there looking for your cash. They're not like other creepy sociopaths expecting a payout for an existing IP. If you dig this thing, find a way to offer support in other ways. As a big fan of Castlevania fan games and ROM hacks, I was pretty excited to give this thing a whirl. The Lacard Chronicles projects are among my favorites, which is neither here nor there, as this has nothing to do with that, but I guess it's a good starting point as it gives you an impression of what I'm into and what I'm looking for. This is, well, it's fine. Occasionally great. Other times underwhelming, wonderfully flawed, but well, worth a try. Ultimately, like anything, there are going to be a few things some enjoy more than others. Waffles, anyone? First things first, the character design. I'm a fan of the animation, but I think that's because I don't dislike Lords of Shadow as much as some people. Simon looks like Gabriel, but that's really not that big a deal. His whipping is strange, a bit circle of the moon. The sound and feel of it is so damn satisfying, especially after it has been upgraded a few times. The Morning Star is it's chunky, almost sexual. It feels awesome. Just listen to it. Sub weapons are permanent pickups, which is no surprise since this is Simon's Quest. They can now be swapped out on the fly with a tap of the shoulder buttons. The holy water is a real gift. It's available from a vendor in the first town, and I rarely felt the need to rely on anything else. All the weapons are satisfying, but the throwing arc and stun damage of the smashy glass is just perfect. Welcome back, my noisy friend. <laughs> Hearts act as ammo, but they also fuel Simon's invincibility through poison blood swamps. Similar to the source game, laurels and garlic are purchased from townsfolk, but they no longer require a manual selection. Once they're in the inventory, they activate automatically, which is an improvement. Fumbling about in an items menu has been eliminated altogether. Now, a map and a clear inventory display. Boom. Streamlined. Sacks of cash are required to buy goods, but by the second half I had nothing left to purchase. Maybe some of these items could have been spread out a bit. I'm not complaining, but yeah, the currency becomes useless rather early in the adventure. It is, however, doled out well during the opening stretch, creating a natural goal for the next gameplay beat. The overall structure is basically the same. Fans of the original will recognize the pace. From beginning to credits, Castlevania Chronicles 2 took me a little over three hours. Most of that time was spent on bosses. It's a relatively linear affair with demonic blockades preventing access to areas until Simon has the appropriate gear. For some, this could be considered an improvement. I, on the other hand, felt restricted. What others very loudly have expressed to be a flaw in the original's design is what still draws me to it. The ability to get lost, to make mistakes, the confusion. Most of that is missing from this interpretation. Townsfolk deliver messages directly, regions are gated, and hidden items are pointed out, literally, in at least one case. There's nothing inherently wrong with this more curated approach. Some will appreciate its no-nonsense structure, but those expecting a true search action experience might be disappointed. A few true secrets still exist, but they're still somewhat marked on the map. Reaching them requires specific items and a lot of backtracking, which I found more tedious than gratifying. I'm saying this as an old man who appreciates exploring obtuse game worlds, so perhaps I'm in the minority. Metroid on the NES is my jam. Castlevania Chronicles 2 is more like Zero Mission. So if that's your bag, check it out. A 
opinions will also vary significantly when it comes to art, design, and music. There's a sterile look to a lot of PC fan games, and this is no different, but there are swaths of beauty to behold. As was the case in the original, Simon begins his quest in a town, which is unfortunate because these are the blandest areas. Repetitive textures and uninteresting backgrounds give these regions a lifeless flash game look. It doesn't make a good first impression. Outside, however, things are vibrant, varied, and downright beautiful. All of the regions will be instantly recognizable to fans of the original, only here, they truly pop. Rays of sunshine beaming through trees, a rainy symphony of the night style exterior exhibiting a stormy sky, mysterious strangers, this dude strung to a tree, a fountain, the scrolling backgrounds look terrific, and some of the dungeons subvert expectations. Dracula's body parts still need to be collected, but the mundane mansions of the 8-bit source have been transformed into uniquely themed boss inhabiting buildings, or in one case, a crypt. These are a joy, especially the dark underground area packed with skeletons, but all of them are far too linear and brief. No longer is a stake necessary to gather the Count's dismembered gifts. Instead, it's a straight shot to the big bad, which would be well and good if there was more enemy variety or maybe a few tricky traps. I'm not a maze guy, but something, anything would have been an improvement. Visually, these are all distinct, but there are barely any obstacles preventing our bouncy Belmont from simply beelining it to the boss chamber. Save statues are generous. One can be found in almost every town, as well as outside each dungeon and before a big bad. There are three lives. A superfluous carryover as there are barely any consequences for dying. It's a bit annoying that a game over sends the player back to the title screen only to be given the option to continue from the last statue. regular getting around isn't much of a challenge outside of the bridge sequences. Yeah, these fish creatures can fuck right off. Uh, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Most of my continues were dumped on boss battles. I'd like to say these deaths happened because I was trying to perfect patterns, but more often than not, I was forced to continue because the design was clunky, health balance issues, or both. First, let me just make a point of mentioning that I had trouble getting the game to recognize any of my controllers. I tried connecting everything from first party modern ones to an old school 360 pad. Nothing worked, but whatever, it happens. People lose their shit every day whining about this kind of stuff online when it comes to fan projects. Just deal with it. These are made for free. They're there are going to be issues. War Machine did what they could, and it's really not that hard to load up a secondary piece of software to sort it out. I'm only mentioning it because sometimes when Simon gets hit, he turns the opposite way, which really screws with the combat, specifically against fast-paced bosses. Maybe it's an input thing on my end. So here's the thing. Dracula's rib acts as a very literal physical shield. It blocks anything that it comes in contact with if you don't press any action buttons, and even works while jumping. Super cool. Effective. Simon also has a slide with invincibility frames. Double the bad assery. Wonderful. All of these things need to be used in a few specific battles to succeed, which is totally fair and extremely rewarding. Only, when I'd make a mistake and get struck, I'd often somehow get flipped into facing in the opposite direction, smashing myself right back into the boss, or left back into the boss if you prefer. It infuriated me because I knew how to defeat the damn thing, but I'd have to play extra conservatively to make up for this design flaw, or to be fair, as I keep saying, input error on my part. That's why I'm saying just take this all with a grain of salt. Now let's do a rundown. The first boss is fine, it turns and tracks like a lazy Susan spinning Dark Souls 2 giant, but overall, a decent introduction. This second one gave me a ton of trouble due to the aforementioned input issues. Monster Frankie was a joy, balanced, well telegraphed attacks with a modest amount of health. Carmilla? Oh, oh, the opposite. The arena looks nice, but instead of programming a few more attacks or giving us something dynamic, she's just a tank that heals intermittently. In all honesty, I almost bailed on the game here. Clearly this was padded out to prolong the fight, and I started getting so damn bored chipping away at her obnoxiously large, um, let's just say health bar. Not challenging, just tedious. I almost considered this a personal affront. This isn't even the worst example of lengthy sponge battles. I'll avoid spoiling the other, as it could be considered a secret, but there's a threesome that somehow enraged and exhausted me all at once. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right, perverts. It doesn't 
doesn't help that most sub weapons do jack shit in these encounters. The bosses also have lengthy invincibility frames. The Reaper is one of the final encounters, and I found it to be a delight. It was a bit easy, I beat it on my first try, but it didn't require lightning fast inputs and didn't have an enormous amount of health. Terrific death effect. <laughs> Another boss I won't spoil is hidden in a somewhat secret area. It inflicts an insane amount of damage, but its design felt like an afterthought as it barely fought back. I'll show a bit of that gameplay after the end card. The regular combat against common foes feels punchy, responsive, and exhilarating, which is why I think I was let down by some of these bosses. Freeze frame feature, process, get it, I get it, do you get it, I do. There's no question that these reworked Castlevania tunes are great. Whether they suit the visuals or not will depend on the player. From what I could gather, War Machine put these together, which is simply remarkable as there's over an hour's worth of covers here. From familiar classics to deep cuts, handhelds to consoles, part of the fun I had was pinning the music to its source. Look, the chuggy chug chugs aren't going to be for everyone. People who follow my channel know I'm a fan of metal, but my favorites here are the ballads, the somber, quieter town theme. Get a load of this one. Finally, some N64 love. Also, any game that features Sinking Old Sanctuary is aces in my book. <laughs> The main overworld theme changes after each boss has been defeated. I, for one, am grateful that Bloody Tears isn't here. Well, I mean, it is, but it's a bit of a secret. I wasn't going to spoil it, but if I didn't, someone would actually their way into the comments with it, so yes, it's here. Legendary for a reason, but there are so many incredible Castlevania pieces that sit by the wayside. Wonderfully tasteful how it's introduced here. After a body part has been collected, Simon receives a permanent health increase and now gets teleported outside, so there's no need to backtrack to the entrance exit. Uh, floor traps are completely gone, as is the day-to-night mechanic. Well, I mean, kinda, but again, I'm trying to do my best not to spoil everything here. Despite my gripes, I do think everyone should check this out. Easter eggs, fan service, creativity. There are some great ideas here in Castlevania Chronicles 2. I tried to be constructive with my criticisms, because I really do appreciate these fan projects. Overall, I had a blast returning to this world. It's definitely worth an afternoon playthrough. War Machine also has a Castlevania Chronicles 3 based off of Dracula's Curse, that you should all check out as well. I don't think I'll be covering it on this channel, but there you go. Now you know it exists, if you didn't before. Next time on this channel, something completely different. So stay tuned.